Okay, another project for the day. I've got these two evil mad scientist uh, kits here. One of them is called the XL741 and it's a discrete transistor version of the uh, 741 op amp. I've done a video on that previously. And then one called 35s, which is a discrete transistor version of the 555 timer IC. I've had these sitting around for a few years since I originally built them. Like I said, I have videos on both of these here on YouTube. I finally decided to display them properly, so I'm making a shadow box for them. And um, I figure I'm going to have about that kind of arrangement, one above the other. And then I've designed here in Front Panel Express's free software the uh, control panel that's going to allow me to uh, operate these while they're in the shadow box. There's going to be a power switch for the 555 circuit and all it'll do is flash its LED to show it's working and a power switch for the 741 circuit. There will be a potentiometer with a large knob here to control the input to the op amp and then a set of test points which uh, the probes of a multimeter can be plugged into to see what exactly the input and output signals are. I thought about putting some little bar graphs in here but it was getting too complicated. So with that in mind, ignore the music in the background. I always have music playing while I'm working. Um, I've worked out some details of the dimensions, how I'm going to support the two devices inside the shadow box. I've worked out the depth of components on the front panel and in relation to the uh, dimensions of the shadow box, the subframe, the backboard, and the battery clips for the three 9 volt batteries that will power this. I've worked out the height relative to the two devices, here shown by these, and then how much is taken up by the panel. So I know the overall height. and. Uh, I've worked out the width dimensions, I've worked out the boards I need to get the subframe and the boards I need to get the mainframe. I've got some of this select pine from Home Depot. It's three quarter inch and that should be adequate giving a look at the 741 and 555 kits. The way I set them up to initially test them is kind of jury-rigged and rough looking, so I'm going to have to count on redoing that wiring and so on. Here are the parts I sourced from DigiKey. Red pin jacks or tip jacks uh, for meters to be plugged in for the 741 circuit. Uh, mo maintained push-button switches for the power switches, so these uh, are low profile, attractive looking, and you push them in and they stay pushed, and then you push them again and they pop back up, so it's a maintained alternate action switch. Uh, I needed a 10K potentiometer, and I got this one here. It's a Borns part. I think it's designed for guitar amplifiers and such, but it'll work fine for this. And then I needed some low profile battery holders for the 9 volt batteries, and those are all. Uh, shown here. These are from Keystone Electrics, Electronics. I take one of the pine boards and mark it up for the lengths needed for the main frame of the shadow box and then I use my bevel saw in 90 degree mode to cut them to length and then I reset the bevel saw to 45 degrees and make the bevel cuts on the ends of each section of the frame. Then I use the table saw to rip each section to the proper width and here are those sections completed. I use the bevel saw once again at 90 degrees to cut some remaining board to make the subframe pieces and then I rip them to uh, appropriate width on the table saw. Using the table saw, I cut each of the two pieces into thinner pieces 
and then use the uh, planer to take them down to the desired one quarter inch final thickness. Here I'm doing a test fit of the four main frame sections, making sure that they all line up with no gaps with nice 90 degree corners. The subframe sections are glued here. The main frame sections need to have cutouts to accommodate the acrylic window in the front and the back plate. So here I'm using progressive cuts on the table saw to form those indents. For this final cut, the pieces are too narrow and they would actually fall into the slot around the table saw blade. So I'm making a zero tolerance plate to support them just with a piece of scrap, thin plywood. And now it supports it properly and I can run it quite easily over that and cut out that final narrow piece. And now the main frame can be glued up verifying its 90 degree angles. Now that the subframe is dry, I'm using the paper cutout of the control panel to verify where I need a partition to be inserted and I cut the partition out and glue it in there. The control panel is going to overhang the partition to hide it from view. The main frame glue is dried and here is a view from the underside and I'm cutting a piece of acrylic here using a scribe and here it uh, is test fit into the main frame. With the acrylic window and the subframe inserted into the main frame I'm checking for the proper height of the subframe to line up with the uh, recess for the back plate and they do line up perfectly. To keep the subframe vertically and horizontally centered within the main frame I've got some shim material here and I'm cutting it out and test fitting it here with the shims in place. You can see how that works out and here's a view from the front and here's how the control panel is going to fit. Here's another angle of that and uh, here's showing how the uh, subframes partition is going to be hidden by the control panel. Here's the frame and subframe after sanding and now I've got a piece of 16th inch thick aluminum from the hardware store and I'm going to mark it up for cutting for the control panel and here I'm using my metal shears to cut it one way and then the other and here's how it'll provide an underlay for the decorative part of the control panel and here is a test fit of the aluminum into the frame for the back panel I've got some quarter inch thick plywood from the hardware store and uh, here it is after cutting out to size and here it is being fit into the frame it fits perfectly and it still leaves about a quarter inch extra depth for the mounting system. I've used some screws to attach the back plate to the frame and here's what it looks like from the front and uh, here's what it's like after I put the subframe into it. I bought a sheet of synthetic felt at the hobby shop and here it's cut to size or marked to cut to size and here it is cut to size and it's adhesive backed and here it's stuck onto the backboard and here is a test fit of the subframe over it. From this view it's apparent that the edge of the felt is going to look a little rough where it joins the subframe because I can never get it to match precisely at the edges so I've decided to disguise that with some trim strips on the subframe. And here are the trim strips being glued to the subframe. They are recessed by the thickness of the felt. And here is the actual control panel artwork printed out on 3M print to last paper. And uh, here is another view of the trim strips and here's how they hide the edge of the felt. Here's a final test of the aluminum control panel on the frame and here is the aluminum panel drilled and here corresponding holes are drilled in the acrylic window. 
and here the acrylic is reinserted into the subframe. I used 3M Super 77 spray adhesive to attach the three layers, the acrylic, the aluminum, and the decorative front. I used my X-Acto knife to cut out the decorative front to match the holes, and here all the components are mounted. This is the rear view and the front view, and now it's, well, there's a side view, and now it's back into the subframe. A word on the control panel design. I wanted to originally have some meters on this to show the input and output voltages to the 741 op amp circuit, but I couldn't find anything appropriate. Everything was much too large, and uh, I thought about doing some other arrangement, and nothing worked out. The availability of parts and the sizes were all off, so I finally resolved to just put jacks on the front into which I could plug a couple of multimeters and whenever I wanted to demonstrate this I could do it that way. Here the back panel is marked for the area where it's safe to have the batteries due to uh, no deep components right over those and I've drilled and countersunk uh, holes in the plywood and put some little 440 screws through with their nuts and the nuts fit into the countersunk areas and here's how the batteries clip in. They don't go down quite far enough because of the depth of the heads. I'm not really sure what kind of zero height hardware was originally intended to be used with these, but it's all right. The clips still hold the batteries in adequately. To hold the two kits to the back plane or the backboard, I decided to drill and tap into the aluminum legs in a place where it won't show, and I bought these 632 aluminum one and a half inch male female standoffs from DigiKey and uh, I can see here where there won't be enough thread so I have to offset them on washers and uh, then a little bit of the thread sticks off but just by enough where it won't hit the circuit board and here all four sets of legs have been modified that way. I've laid a piece of paper over the felt so I can mark on it and determine the exact locations of the two electronic kits so I know where to put the mounting holes. The standoffs are too tall so I've cut them shorter, drilled new holes and I'm tapping them for the 632 and here they are attached and you can see it just barely holds the legs of the two kits off of the mounting surface. I've marked the paper with the mounting hole locations and positions of the two kits. I've made some cutouts in the felt so the spacers can sit down on the wood instead of on the felt. And here are the uh, screws going in from the back. And here's how it all fits together inside the shadow box. Wiring from the two kits will go behind the backboard. I've cut two more holes here for the wiring to go through and I've marked out where I'm going to route some channels for the wiring to go in and here I'm test fitting the wiring in those channels. I'm just using some old ribbon cable that I peeled off conductors from. To mount this to the wall I've got this hanger bar which is going to be used with neodymium magnets. I've got these 15 millimeter magnets and a Forstner bit that's 15 millimeters and you can see I've drilled two of them here in the backboard and I'm checking for depth here they should be exactly one magnet deep and they are and then I've drilled two corresponding holes in the hanger bar and they're going to be held to that's going to be held to the wall using a couple of wood screws that are recessed like this and here's how far the wood screw sticks through the hanger bar and here I'm giving the first coat of black paint to the frame and subframe. I've mounted a couple of terminal strips which will be hidden by the kits and here's the 555 kit with its uh, onboard parts cleaned up and here's how the decorative wires are attached to the ribbon cables using the terminal strip and that's the way it'll look there. A lot prettier than the way it was. Here are similar treatments given to the 741 which has more wires 
and here's the transitional terminal strip and here's the way it'll look on the felt and here's the way the terminal strips are hidden underneath the kits. Here a bead of gel CA glue is used to affix the ribbon cables into their routed slots. I used epoxy to attach the neodymium magnets into their countersunk holes. The frame and subframe have their three coats of black paint and here they're put back together. Shows how that looks. Okay, I've got everything positioned on my bench here ready to wire up. And the first thing I do is um, make up my connector to allow the two sets of wires to be unplugged, which is necessary if I ever want to dismantle the entire frame for some reason. And there all the wiring is complete with the connector in the middle. Well, almost complete. The power switch for the 555 timer circuit was faulty and I had to get DigiKey to send me a replacement uh, which luckily arrived in the nick of time and here it's wired up. I marked the three battery holders and the batteries are installed and here I'm tucking the all the wiring into its little compartment and it all fits. At this stage I realized I'd made a mistake and it actually had been niggling in the back of my mind and just never happened. But I realized that the power supply is plus and minus 9 volts maximum from the batteries. That means the output swing of the op amp can't, of the 741 op amp that is, can't be any more than plus or minus 9 volts. And yet the potentiometer I'm using as the source of the input voltage can swing a full plus to minus 9 volts and the 741 op amp is set up with a gain of 2 so you can see the problem. I'm gonna have only a partial potentiometer rotation before I max out the output voltage on the op amp. So I went back and did a quick sketch here and figured out that I need a 6.8k resistor on each end of the pot in order to uh, drop 5 volts on either, size, on either side and give me a plus to minus 4 volt input to the op amp which with the gain of 2 gives me plus and minus 8 volts which should be within the uh, the swing that's possible given the battery voltage. To implement this I used a bit of double-sided foam or double-sided adhesive foam and um, used that to provide an offset terminal to put my dropping resistors in between and then re-terminate the wiring to the upper terminal strip. The four jacks on the control panel are tip jacks and they're intended to be used to plug in the standard size uh, voltmeter probe tips and that's exactly what I'm doing here with two different meters, one measuring input and one measuring output. To test the 741 circuit I turn the input adjust pot to get a zero volt or close to it on the input and verify that I'm only about 15 millivolts on the output so it's essentially zero. Here I've adjusted the pot to get a uh, negative 3 volt input and the op amp doubles that and gives me a negative 6 volt output. And here I've adjusted the pot to give me a positive 2 volt input and the 741 op amp doubles that to give me a positive 4 volt output. Okay, a quick test of the 555 circuit. I turn the power button on and I get the roughly 1 hertz flashing LED that I expected. So that's great. After using some glass cleaner on the acrylic window, I'm ready to plug it back together and here are the two halves plugged together with my connector and the back put down and it's uh, ready to be screwed together. I've used wood screws to mount the hanger bar to the wall of my office right next to my Relay Computer's shadow box. See my other video on that. And here it is hanging on the wall and several different views of it. I've got a lot of reflection on there unfortunately. I think it came out pretty good. Alright, and here's how it came out. It's on my office wall, 
right next to my relay computer, which I have another video on. It's just hanging there on its uh, magnetic hanger bar. And uh, while I can't uh, easily right at this moment duplicate the operation of the 741 because I don't have my meters handy to plug in, I can at least turn on the 555 